go. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer and this is Deep Ultra 3.0. Um, our, uh, our, our always guest for this topic is with us today, but before we get on to that, um, I'm going to uh, ask everybody if you are watching this show on the Off Planet Media YouTube channel, please also go over and subscribe to the Emily Moyer YouTube channel. Some of my work will continue to appear here, but all of my work will appear on the Emily Moyer channel and it will always appear there first. Alrighty, cool. Well, by popular demand of people wanting to know her opinion on things going on and also just wondering how she is doing during this period of time, Elisa E is back with us. Welcome back. How are you? Hey, Emily. I'm good. I'm good. All things considered, I'm good. <laughs> you actually look probably the most well I've ever seen you. <laughs> MK Ultra suits me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> before, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's been a bit since you've been since you've been with us or been with me here, and you know, obviously, um, all of the things that we are seeing sort of deployed on a public level now, like, are all things that a we knew were coming, but b like it was pretty obvious to either anybody who's been through it or anybody who's just researched it well that like we are seeing all of the like programs, tools, and mechanisms of the MK Ultra and related programs taken from a project level to global deployment. Um, and so I thought, I think that like, I would like to kind of, and I get a lot of emails from you of what you're looking at and stuff like that. So I kind of want to go through what this whole sort of outer picture looks like to you. And then um, in the patrons hour, we'll go into sort of the internal possibilities of this time and some of the, uh, the upside of the things that can happen right now. But just kind of, you know, first of all, let people know like how you are, how you've been and how you are how you are experiencing this because that was kind of the question that was asked by a couple of people people were curious about that cool cool yeah um well uh as as you and i have spoken of personally in private uh we've you know we've lived this for literally decades i mean my entire existence and the irony for me is um and some of your some of your viewers know this because of the last radio show and the GoFundMe thing was um, I was going to leave the area I'm in due to uh, an airway uh, issue that I have and being at this altitude and I I stopped and changed my mind and this was the really beginnings of the the whole COVID I'll call it a psyop um, and I stayed put which I'm really glad I did um, but. I, I'm prefacing this because I was ready to go out. I finally got to the place where I was ready to go out, figure out really who am I? What do I want to do? You know, just take off and um, experience life differently. And then literally for me, what I saw was, oh my God, no, I guess I'm not because MK Ultra is now here for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's in the world. It has opened up. And for me, it, those of you that do know my story, um, my altar back, what, 12 years ago, kept saying this, this is what's gonna happen is, they're coming for all of us. They're coming for everybody. They're, you know, I'm a microcosm of the macrocosm. They're coming for everybody. And ironically, I've stated, or she stated, uh, they're writing the tech into us. And, um, and I wanna preface that a little bit if you are spiritually sound, meaning you've got your feet on the ground, you're self-aware, you have this connection to something much greater than yourself that supports you, um, you can use tech and know what you're doing and you can use tech for good. But there are a lot of people that are very unconscious. Um, they're not self-aware. They have not had what I would call an awakening. Um, and that's as much spirit as intellectual awakening. And it is part of what's feeding this whole thing, this particular PSYOP, as well as, you know, so many other aspects of it. So for me, it's, um, it was really clear right from the beginning that this was, here we go, is the feeling was, here we go. This is the beginning. And, you know, I'm going to read something just to kind of preface um, I'll go ahead and pull that up now. Just a couple of simple statements. This is from um, 
This is from, actually, this is called the Christian Post, and it's called, Is the Media Engaging in Psychological Warfare Against America? And that's the name of the article. And I just want to read one sentence, and it says, one of the secrets of psychological warfare, called psi warfare by the military, is to try to convince enemy troops that surrender is sweet, that it is better to capitulate than to continue to fight, that defeat is inevitable. And that really, um, that speaks volumes to me. I mean, it's really simple. And, and, and I would even recommend for, and I'm sure a lot of your, your listeners already know this, but I really recommend for people to start looking at things like psych warfare. What does that mean? How does it work? Um, look into torture and the process of torture. I mean, and there are some people that have done some really great research and work and postings on this, videos included, including, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe you and Randy have gotten into this. Um, Amazing Polly did a, a really good one on torture. I'm not, personally, I'm not in general a fan of her work, uh, but that video was excellent. It was excellent. Yeah, she has, she has some of those, and maybe this is my own personal issue, she has some of those things about her of some of the new media people right? The newer uh, Nish and I were talking about this last week, you know, some of the sort of flash without some of the grit, which I kind of prefer some of the grit. And also like I have like, and this is maybe my own issue. I, I have a built-in level of suspicion about people who attained their rise during the QAnon, non you know, the QAnon sense rise, even if they don't talk about Q, there seem to be- I think she mentioned, I don't know if she really talks about it, but I think she yeah. mentioned that and you know, so many people do mention that. And I try to leave that off the table because I have some friends who are really, real devout followers of that. Um, and they've, you know, just, they don't push it on me. They just, every once in a great while I get something from it. I'm, you know, I think we've talked about it. I'm, um, I stay out of that area. <laughs> um, because I'm not going to go one way or the other. It could go one way or the other. I really, the truth is, I don't know what that is, but I have suspicions in this day and age, and I'll attribute this to dark journalist. He said one day, you know, in this day and age, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but in this day and age, basically, you can't be anonymous anymore because AI systems are running and so forth. You know, you need to you need to step up, show your face, your name, whatnot, because we can't judge. The technologies are far greater than what most people think, and I'm I'm not yet convinced. I'm one way or the other um, what QAnon is. I'm really not convinced yeah. either way. But anyway, I know that's a sidetrack. But um, yeah, I wanna I wanna I shared this with you. I'm gonna pull up that email and just make a few quotes on. Um, just to preface all this for people, um, oops, wrong one, that's your link. Here we go. Uh, what, and this came from nomorefakenews.com. This is John Rappaport. And he put this together in one of his, and by the way, you guys can sign up for free um, and he'll email you basically every day uh, with something. But I wanna read these older MKUltra and not just MKUltra, but various um, uh, things on brainwashing, um, a symposium, symposium held at Harvard Medical School on sensory deprivation, mm -hmm. CIA interdepartmental memos, um, and then one a little bit more recent, 2001, um, from a Thomas Robbins, Benjamin David Zablocki, and it's from an article called Misunderstanding Cults. But these, we will talk about it, but I think these are uh, official enough that it stirs people's ability to really listen and to ask questions. So the first one is from the CIA memo. Quote, can we get control of an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation, unquote, okay? Pretty much says it all. That's obviously from Project Artichoke, which is MKUltra. Um, and then regarding like quarantine, isolation, social distancing, wearing masks, this one's from um, the Sensory Deprivation Symposium at Harvard. Uh, quote, we did not know what the Russians brainwashing procedures were, but it seemed that they were producing some peculiar changes of attitude. How? 
One possible factor was perceptual isolation and we concentrated on that, end quote. The next one is um, from uh, regarding brainwashing in particular. And these are all from the 50s and 60s that I'm reading right now. And this one's kind of in regard to using fake official science as mind control. Quote, brainwashing is a system of befogging the brain so a person can be seduced into acceptance of what would otherwise be abhorrent to him. He loses touch with reality. However, in order to prevent people from recognizing the inherent evils in brainwashing, the communists pretend that it is only another name for something already very familiar or of unquestioned respect, such as education or reform, end quote. And then the last one, this is the fourth, and this is from the uh, beginning of the early 2000s, and this is about uh, misunderstanding cults. And so this would be in relation, think of this in relation to recruiting citizens to as contact tracers. In other words, we're going back to Nazi Stasi days of getting people to, to uh, report on other people. And this is quote, brainwashing is defined as an observable set of transactions between a charismatically structured collectivity and an isolated agent of the collectivity with the goal of transforming the agent into a deployable agent end quote. And that's from the early 2000s. And I think those quotes, he did, he always does a fabulous job, John Rappaport, but they really, really speak to what's happening right now. Um, my biggest, uh, I don't wear a mask. Um, I planned ahead when this very began, like three months ago, I did contact the doctor that um, diagnosed me with the collapsed airway and ha asked him to just send me a really simple note. I knew I was gonna need it in the future and I haven't had to use it until a week ago. Um, so I've been in a lot of contact with people who uh, initially I've watched this process where initially nobody did anything when I walked around without a mask. Uh, then it got to the point where, you know, I got a lot of dirty looks and stares and um, an occasional question of why I wasn't wearing one. It has now progressed um, to the point of uh, people are extremely aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, in, this includes uh, my most recent, which I didn't talk to you about, was last week. Was I, it did involve the police? Um, oh, wow. I was uh, accosted basically by a manager of a large uh, store. It was actually the Kroger change chain of stores. Our our version here. Um, and the manager, who is twice my size, male, was extremely rude, aggressive at the door. And um, I mean, just like angry, just angry. And I kept asking him to call the police so I would show them my note, uh, because I do believe that, you know, I'm not required to show it to this guy. And um, I said, go ahead, you know, please call me, the, call the police so we can sort this out. Anyway, I get in the store. He let me go in. He was just out of control. I wound up contacting corporate. Um, and I did okay, but I have to say that one with the overpowering male mm -hmm. set off some old trauma inside. I realized when I was shopping that internally I was shaking. Um, and that lasted for quite a while. Um, and when I left, there was a policeman waiting for me super nice guy had been on the force for years and was just he was the best part of the whole thing because i hadn't had any any interaction with the police on this issue um and of course I, everything was fine i showed him my note and now i'm taking the note into the store trying to nip it in the bud um just so i don't have to deal with things uh i'm kind of fed up with it um and so i've watched this progression in my town over like three plus months where there, it's now, oh, the person that called the police, by the way, wasn't the manager. It was a, an anonymous customer in the store that saw me walking around. So here's the change. And, and I'm, I'm bringing this up, not so much because as Emily and I have discussed, this isn't really about masks. Masks are simply part of the technique to, um, to break us down. It's the same thing as pumping in at the stores, you know, constantly the fear of wearing a mask and 
wearing it properly and social distancing. This is just part of the technique. And when you get into looking at psych warfare and torture, you'll see, you'll be able to see the stages that they're taking us through. And the whole thing is, is really based on the thing I read in, in the very beginning. It's basically just to get you to give it all up. It's, it's all about giving it up. Um, they wear you down. This is what they do in MKUltra. Um, and on a more individual and even more severe level, <laughs> involving a lot of physical stuff, um, as well as psychological, is to break you down until you are uh, a blank slate. That's an actual term in MKUltra, literally a blank slate. And I'm watching it happen out of the fear that people are dealing with. Um, and I've started shifting, we're, we're gonna get into, I know more of this later, but shifting into a place of seeing that I am standing before a person who lives in fear mm -hmm. when I'm dealing with anyone. And I mean, I've had customers just go off on me yelling in the store and, um, not just at me, but anyone who doesn't have a mask. And what I've realized is these people are, this is just a symptom of where they live. This has simply brought out the symptom of fear that they constantly live in. You know, they may look like a normal person when everything's all hunky-dory and gone pretty smooth, but as soon as something happens, which is the case with a crisis or an event um, in this case i mean this is to me this is another false flag is what this is even though people are dying uh, from various ailments um, and so i once once i start looking at it that way i can much easier not to react even if i have something come up inside which has happened several times whether i want to tell them they're an idiot or, you know, one day I told them, mind your own business. And that just totally set her off, you know? <laughs> um, oh man, I mean, she went nuts at that point. So I'm realizing that these people are living in tremendous fear. And I do know what that is like to live in that kind of fear. I used to live in that every minute of every day waiting to die. I mean, literally, okay, am I gonna die today or am I gonna die tomorrow? And I don't live in that place anymore. So I can bring, you know, something else to the table. So my point is, if I haven't made this already, is that it, I'm identifying very specific increments. The incremental. Yeah. Question of the progression of this psych warfare, warfare, which it is. And I'm not going to try to get into what a virus is or what this COVID is. Well, actually, we probably will get into what our opinions on that is. Um, at some point, but uh, there's no question whatsoever that this is a, a, a full-scale global operation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm going to stop there. There's some other things, but let's let's go down the road. Okay, so you just said a bunch of things that I want to respond to, and then we'll move on to okay. sort of the next portion of, of what this is. I want to say something about, I'm just going to tell you these all ahead of time so that if I forget that we can get back. I want to talk uh, to you a bit about John Rappaport. I want to yeah. talk about how like you tell is kind of a unique kind of place and it's unusual that this is sort of happening there. And then I want to talk about um, uh, the what the contact tracing program and the cults that you talked about. Um, and then I want to talk about like uh, the process of sort of deciding where your boundary or where your line is. Um, and then after we go through those and we can get into the what we actually think this is. And I have a feeling we'll agree on most of it and probably have a few sure. ideas on some. John Rappaport is incredibly interesting. I can't keep up with him, right? He sends too many emails. <laughs> I know. I, I don't read them all either. I can't. Yeah. Getting like the first probably six weeks of all this, I was reading everything. Me too. And they, they were more spaced out then. And then now they've just like become, he's kind of like reminds me of me when I get really hyper and going, like once he gets on his track, like <laughs> get it all before, before it gets too confusing in here. So I'm just going to put it all down. Right. Um, so I, no, I but agree. You know what? But he's good at, for people who don't know totally. anything about all these so-called epidemics and pandemics, he's perfect for taking you through that process. Absolutely. And so uh, th this might just be kind of a fun aside because he's been coming up a lot lately, right? 
So like, he's very interesting. He obviously writes articles, but he also teaches people how to think. <laughs> Not what to think, but how to think. Like he has courses and all this kind of stuff. But it come up, Robert and I actually did a show that was titled, uh, they referred to this in the title, and then it just came up in my series with Michael Wan the other day too. John Rappaport not only looks like, but the way he deploys information, he's fucking Rudolf Steiner. <laughs> Pull up a picture of the two of them next to each other. And you want- well, I, could see, I could see a resemblance, sure. Robert loves, one of Robert's favorite activities, like when he's, I don't know if it's when he's bored or when he's just like, <laughs> trying to find out who's who now <laughs> he loves to look at those pictures right of the old right and like and, and, and you, we all know the main ones but he can go on he can just keep <laughs> another one i got another one another one another one but i was happy because i came to him with this one and he was <laughs> but we'll look at it and like so just i mean i'm sort of joking but sort of not michael and i were talking about this as like another way that the doctrine of signatures works, right? Where like, so sure, there's the possibility that like Rudolf Steiner figured out some extreme life extension and that he's now hiding in plain sight as John Rappaport and deploying <laughs> techniques in a more modern way. Like I give weight to that possibility because we live in a strange world and he was an unusual person, right? And he, he had a lot of systems that he had developed and, and, and other people's systems who he thought met, like aligned with his, that he was deploying in his life, right? Possibly figured something out. But it's also the doctrine of signatures is like where like a carrot looks like your eye and it's good for your eye, right? That like the world is magical. And this is some of the beauty of nature that like for people who are looking and searching for confirmation of the truth of something, right? Like, like the fact that he looks like Steiner and, and, and like the, the, what he does seems to be in alignment with that is kind of a confirmation of path, right? That this is the next logical step or, or the current evolution of that kind of work or whatever. And so we love just going to town on this uh, <laughs> when became Rappaport issue, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no I, I'm, well, I can't speak to that really, but I can say I, this guy is, you know, I, I think of something a friend said to me a while back, which was stop looking to the PhDs and the, you know, all the ones that have been educated in the system, which is brainwashing, you know, as well, uh, because they leave out, it's not that what's in there is all wrong, it's that they leave out way too much. So, um, and, and many people who have, who have studied in university and become doctors and PhDs and all that have, have turned around and said, whoa, you know, there was so much missing. But what I can say about John Rappaport is, I mean, this guy has spent decades focusing on this, you know, like he was naming all the others as they came out and before this one. So he's unique in that you know i mean i'm sure there are other people doing that that i'm not aware of but he's you know like my friend said go to the people that are doing the research and have the some experience or you know stop looking for these uh grant supported approved system educated uh so-called experts to talk about the things that they've been indoctrinated or brainwashed to not talk about or downright threatened for all I know. Um, so John Rapport, yeah, he's, and he, of course, he has that, uh, that sarcasm and, sarcasm humor, and you know, that it's actually some of it's amazingly entertaining, you know. <laughs> Regardless of whether he's Rudolf Steiner or not, in this lifetime, he claims to be 81 years old, looks like he couldn't be more than in his late 50s at maximum, and has a, gra like, he's not in any kind of cognitive decline, much unlike our current presidential, no. uh, <laughs> uh, right, you know, possibilities, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like he is sharp as can be. I mean, he is. Yeah. So he's doing something right, whether it, yes. whether whether he's actually like 160 and pretending to be 81, or whether he's just 81 and, and looks like he's 57 or whatever. You know, like he's doing stuff right. And I actually think that like this stretching of the mind in the way that he does, right, is part of keeping the physicality young as well. 
Yeah. Right? Like exercise. I, I'm a hundred percent sure he looks to me like he probably uh, body surfs or surfs or, or does, I think he lives by the ocean. So he does some kind of physical activity every day that involves nature. And he's obviously stretching his mind about a, across a variety of challenging topics. And, um, right. That, that works. It does not pills and, and, you know, you right. Know, right. That, that, and, that. and, and, and I have another friend who, um, I see like that. I mean, she's in her early seventies doing work that I can barely understand it when I read it, let alone be the researcher who's putting this all together. And for me, there's some aspect of, <clears throat> it's not even just, just the mind. It's about these people are doing work that's destiny work. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it's like, they got a job, man, and they're just focused on their job. And, you know, I can, at least with my friend, I can speak to that. That's what she does. That's all she does pretty much because that's what she's known for decades. She's here to do. And that's where it goes. And so, so I think something, something bigger even, is coming through, something yeah. much bigger is, is coming through, you know what Absolutely. I mean? And I think, Absolutely. you know, the word has largely, I don't even like the word, and it's sullied, right? And it's been taken off into all sorts of stupid places. But if there is any true, like, organic, correct form of channeling, channeling something bigger and more important through just one person, because when it comes together through one person, it's easier to, for it to be cohesive, and they can explain it in a way that is an easier narrative to follow than when you're trying to pull pieces from all of these different... Yeah. Places. And that's what both John and my friend, I see them the same way as they're, it's, you know, and they're bringing, I don't, can't speak to John as much, but my friend is pulling the information together into one place yeah. and she attributes it, you know, to it's, the other people who actually did the research and brought that. It's like a organic form of an RSS feed or an aggregator of news, right? I'd say Sophia qualifies in this department. Yes, as well. she's another one. Yep. Yeah. Sophia, I know who you're speaking of. Uh, John, definitely. Sophia, and there Alana are Alana Freeland. Alana Freeland. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a few others as well. That, yeah, know, I'm sure. That do this kind of thing on on different topics, right? Like on different yeah. different kinds of things. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. So I highly recommend, I'm actually, I think, going to take some of his little courses too. My friend, Michael Wan, who I'm doing my new series with, he says like that's some of the best money he ever spent was on, on John Rappaport's courses. Cool. Um, yeah. And so I think I'm going to do that. But um, unfortunately, John, like, John doesn't really respond to requests for interviews. Everybody I know who's tried to, he has a few people he talks to and that's it. And at first I thought, well, maybe I'm just too small potatoes, but I know someone who's huge potatoes and very good who also got no response. And so it's, but you know what? I, you can only, if, if he's here to do that work, so I don't take it personally, you know what I mean? Like, here to do that work and he you know if he spends all day responding to people and going on every little show and whatever he's chosen a few outlets that have a large reach for his you know thing even i, I i'm 100 percent sure some of those outlets aren't the ones he would necessarily <laughs> choose to, like you know think that that are perfect in the way they deploy information but they go to a lot of people and if if, if, right. if someone's fed a bunch of bullshit but they get to see john rapaport in the midst of it it may wake up the part of their mind that, you know, so I really appreciate his work and he's really important, you know, right now. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. It's like his time. Yeah. You know, I think you said that a while back. It really is like his time because what, what's happening or, excuse me, the narrative mm -hmm. of what's happening. Let me put it that way. It's about the narrative of what's happening. Um, false narrative. That's, this is his forte. Yes. Well, the difference between him and really everybody else is well, there's others of us who can put the narrative and the, the breadcrumbs of the narrative together. He actually understands the science from his previous work on HIV, right? Yep. He understands the science of the way the mind works based on the courses he's put together. The uh, He has that one guy, I think his name is Jack Hart or Jack Love, who's like a regression therapist through hypnotist. So he understands the way this is deployed individually. So the same thing can be applied to. He's worked with a lot of interesting people. Um, and and I, he has like deep, intimate knowledge of every aspect of this style off as well not just the overall like a lot of us can look at the thing and go oh yeah this looks just like the other thing they do like that's obvious but he when when he can clearly describe not only the mechanism but the details and the facts of each facet 
each prong of the, you know, of the shark bite, then, you know, it, it, it's, it's very impressive. <laughs> he's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, and, and the science and seeing the pattern, he's been at it long enough that, you know, he can look at, he looked at SARS, he looked at H1N1, he looked at all these as they've happened. He was doing this work for each and every version of this. And so he sees the pattern of the reporting, what the CDC says, what the, you know, all these different um, outcomes were, the numbers, the, and so he can just throw all that right back out there yeah. in relation to this one. Yeah, no, no, awesome, awesome contribution. Absolutely. So the next thing I wanted to say was, you know, you live in the Taos area, right? And, you know, yes. and this is for mm, at least half a century or more now, been a place of alternative healing that people who are a little outside the norm go to find themselves or lose themselves, whichever one they're trying to do, or, you know, like, you know, it's a very crunchy place, you know, people who are into health and whatnot, and people who are into just living outside of the normal mainstream kind of thing. So the fact that this is occurring there, right, it is no surprise that it's occurring here or you know, in big cities or in more um, sort of traditional kinds of places, right? So the fact that it's occurring in a place that is built on the idea of we think differently than the other people and it's occurring at that level of the calling the police, right like is super that that is a new level of success like this this is a new level of success with deploying the mind control kind of stuff right because you know you've existed in this kind of place as like maybe in a still a little bit of an anomaly amongst all the people but like you know that that's okay we, we accept that here and some of us even like it or whatever but now it's to the point that no she's different we have to call the cops just being different is a, an offense worthy of calling the cops, not just of being amused by it or maybe even annoyed by it, but now it's the calling the cops. And to me, that is like, wow. Like, you know, like tell, you wouldn't think, you know, people are supposed to be aware of natural health there. So they, right? Like this makes this fault, this doesn't make any logical sense at all in any way. Right. How well, it, 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 it actually, it's very, it's a very different scenario. And I, I want to be careful of what I say here <laughs> um, on some, some of the things I'm going to say uh, are going to be found probably offensive, but this is actually uh, on a very large scale, this area, and I've known this for many years because I lived here before, um, this area is an MK Ultra hub. Yes. Th those kinds of what are. I mean by that is I'm isolated as an MK Ultra survivor, very isolated, as if I, I would be in so many places and actually more so than some of the larger places. Um, however, on a grand scale, this is an MK Ultra experiment here, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, and I don't just mean the COVID. Uh, PSYOP, I mean decades of it. And what this is, is I'll just say my words for it, <laughs> left liberal new age. Yeah. Um, and I am not, I want to preface this with, I am not a political person. I don't believe in parties. I don't believe in elections. I don't believe on a higher level. I, I still believe on a community level, you can have influence when you're in a small place like this. I do believe that. But be, when you go to the state or federal level, um, it's, all, it's all bullshit. We, and I'm sure most of your viewers already, already know all that. Um, so I'm not coming from a political place. I'm coming from um, a mind control place. Um, and what I mean by that is when you understand the technologies that we've had for quite some time, uh, what was done to me in the 60s and 70s predominantly, definitely in the 60s, um, and continued on for years was on an individual level. Um, and of course, we all know that the numbers of individuals is extremely high. This has been going on for a long time. But there's also another, and this is a, another version, uh, which is en masse. Mm -hmm. um, you can, 
when you understand the technologies, you, they can target a whole region, they can target um, a city, they can target a, a neighborhood, they can target a street, they can target an individual home, they can target an individual person. I mean, this is, this is what it, it has been for decades. And this area is one of those areas. And there's a, you know, there's an interesting um, I won't try to get into this, but there's an interesting concept that has been around also for decades, and it was called the Taos hum. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, just the possibilities of, and, and not that long ago, uh, a couple months ago, two, three months ago, there was a big C-130 flying around very, I mean, it looked like it was going to fall out of the air. It was flying so low, and it was just circling the whole region. I mean, people saw it. It was up there for hours. It's kind of like, okay, what's, what's the C-130, you know, just circling the area for literally for hours. Um, and my mind immediately goes to, well, you know, they're probably sending out some kind of frequency off the plane. They don't need the plane anymore. They can do it off of satellites and cell towers and, you know, various antennas and so forth. But there's still, it's kind of like with uh, individual MKUltra, there's still the individual program, even though it has become an en masse program, they're still gonna work with individuals and facilities and doing rituals and all that. And it's this kind of the same concept. So it's not really surprising to me um, as far as this area compared to another larger area, what's, what has been my issue that I've shared with you is how effective on a broad scale Yes. this is on the civilian population. I didn't quite think, and don't get me wrong, I have people here who are very aware. There are people in the town, there are people I connect with. There's quite a few people here that, um, you know, we're, they're all scratching their head like, what is going on with everybody? Can't they see what's happening? So there's always those exceptions. But on a larger scale, um, this area this region has been targeted for a long time. Um, it's also a hotbed for UFO activity. You know, uh, last year there was something in June in the mountains over the Carson National Forest. And then literally in September, I mean, not actually less than a mile. I live near the Taos Mountains, the, the Taos Ski Valley at the base of the mountains. And less than a mile from me, there were six sheep mutilated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the typical mutilation, which is there's no footprints, there's no equipment, there's no, you know, cars coming in, the, the people are put to sleep, the dogs don't even, the protection dogs don't even bark and all that stuff. So, um, and the whole San Juan Air Valley has been um, very high level UFO activity for literally for decades. So um, to me, and a lot happened to me personally, when I lived here before and was attempting to get out of my programming, there was a ton of stuff that happened. Um, it's a very active area. So, you know, to me, it gets back to um, really the only protection, so to speak, is for a person to be incredibly self-aware, um, incredibly grounded and present in life uh, and have some kind of, of uh, you know, connection to something much greater than themselves, whatever they want to call it, but, um, and knowledge. I mean, and this is why I'm a, a Steiner student is because it's about education and understanding everything as much as you possibly can, uh, because knowledge is protection, you know, to some degree. So, um, forgive me for my, my three word label, but those three things right now, um, I see very active in the success mm -hmm. of this program uh, because there's an acquiescing in people. There's a giving up, there's a handing over, there's a, um, you know, hearing the narrative and buying it. There's no, there's no thinking going on there. There's no questioning aside from always the, the exceptions to the rule. So. Okay. So real quickly, because you brought it up before we go on to the next part, which was, I wanted to talk about uh, contact tracing and cults since you brought up UFOs. What is your thoughts on the fact that like there seems to be Congress acknowledging the existence of, of UFOs during this period of time, right? Like it's kind of, it, it, right. It's a, 
Uh, I mean, Marco Rubio, you know, what? Right? Like this whole, um, I think the, all of the misinformation, all of the misinformation, disinformation, non-information, PSYOP, all the stuff, the seeds that have been laid throughout the UFO program for the last at least 30 to 40 years are kind of coming to um, fruition, of course, during this time, which is not surprising to people like you and I, because, you know, if you're aware, whatever you think it is, I think there's different versions of what people might think it is. You know, this would be an ideal time for a Project Blue Beam, right, kind of thing right and whatnot whether it's uh occurs in the mind or actually occurs in the sky um but this uh sudden um uh like disclosure that everybody has been i mean it, it been i love the word i love that word you know right. <laughs> uh excuse me it's been disclosed okay for <laughs> decades it's been disclosed for decades. I mean, that is the disclosure. It's been here. It's, you know, it, it's, it cracks me up. Well, when you have a, you have a situation like TSSA and, you know, it's loaded with ex-CIA deputy administrators and, you know, I mean, come on, <laughs> there's no ex-CIA. I mean, there is, but you know what I'm saying. It's, the, it's, the only real ex-CIA usually are either jobless or in jail. There's no <laughs> the, the true whistleblowers. Those are the only ones that are X, you know, or the ones that are truly whistleblowers. You're right. And they're in trouble on some level. Um, so, well, what I see is, first of all, the whole UFO issue, abduction, which I can speak to personally uh, for decades of my life. Um, all, all of that is mind control. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my, in mine, I'm now, I'm not going to get into whether there's life out there or in their visiting here. That's not where I'm going to go because I'm sure there's life somewhere else. I mean, it, it, but the point is that in my experience, my background is that the, the UFO, the abductions, the alien interaction, so-called alien interactions, which I've have said repeatedly now, um, in my case, are demonic or entities. These are malevolent beings that are not so much getting in a ship and traveling from a, a star or another galaxy or another planet as much as crossing dimensionally um, into, you know, into physical manifestation or whatever you want to call it. Mine were directly related to my mind control programming. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify that, when I had, and I remember this moment, I was living in Moab and I was in deep deprogramming and I had the moment full on realization and acceptance that these aren't aliens, these are demons, okay? These are malevolent entities. These are beings that are working for the dark side. Um, as soon as that fully came on to me, do you know I never had another? <laughs> interaction or uh you know nothing appeared of them in my room or whatnot ever and this is like going on a decade okay um so the jig was up yeah you know the the, the story was out it, the, the deception was no more and and then i could give you a whole litany of how many of those experiences regarding various aspects of what it was presented as um, and I had the realization of what it really was, and it ceased immediately, mm -hmm. instantaneously ceased. So there's some, to me, that fits into some spiritual laws that um, are active here in the world that, uh, you know, these dark forces, however they're working, whoever they're working through, as in the case of, you know, this, this PSYOP, when you educate yourself and you face these things full on, they lose their power. Yeah, and, it, and either and they're that to me is the the UFO issue, and and here's the other thing. It's like it's like the guy who told me about the this, one of the local farmers that has a field next to us told me about the sheep mutilation. Well, you know, I looked at him and I said, "Oh, okay." I said, "You do know that we've got those ships too," and you know. To me, it's like, I don't think people realize, and Joseph P. Farrell would be a great place to go for those who don't know the history of the technology uh, regarding airships and so forth. 
Um, but we've had them for decades. The, the Russians have had them for decades. Um, you know, not every ship is some alien directed. Right. I mean, to me, it makes perfect sense. And this is my opinion, but it makes perfect sense why these guys or girls or whoever was, you know, tractor beaming these sheep up um, back in September is, you know, the parts that they take out is, are areas where toxins would accumulate mm -hmm. in the particular tissue. And I'm trying to tell people, well, you know, have you noticed that we've been sprayed with chemtrails for 30 plus years? You know, my opinion would be, this isn't some alien trying to figure out the life of a sheep. It's humans trying to determine the concentrations of their chemtrails you yeah. know they've been doing it for years you know so anyway that's my but as far as this time it fits into the whole mind control narrative um and possibly it could be as i mean they're putting an awful lot of money and energy into this um so it could be the you know the project blue beam thing but it could also just be part of taking down people like part of what we were talking about excuse me, the, the, the PSYOP process, the torture process, it could be part of creating, moving them into such a critical point of fear at some point that they completely acquiesce to whatever that next step at that time um, from the perpetrators is. In other words, we'll save the alien card for this you know, right. this level of, of um, control or this level of getting them to completely hand over. So that's, that's where I'm at. I, I think that's a, an interesting point that I don't know if you know who Nish is. Uh, like, she's my friend. She's been on the show several times. You know, she's, she's, she's part of the group. <laughs> um, but she, had the, she has a two show. She has a show called uh, Nox Mente, where it's uh, her and her host, they kind of talk about pe with the people from the alternative media about their dreams. She's really into dream analysis. And then they also have another show called The Obelisk, where they talk more about general stuff that's going on. And she has a new show called The Cosmic Salon. But I just was, I just had her on my show a couple of weeks ago, and she made a really interesting connection to me, for me, between um, the Black Dahlia murders and the cattle mutilations. And they started about the same time, and the way she was dissected was exactly the way these cattle mutilations occur. So there was like a human sacrifice that sort of kicked off this operation, which may actually be eventually where they're going with some of this, right? And I was like, wow, like we didn't get super, she's done some work on it. She's talked about it a lot. We didn't get super deep into it in the conversation, but just intuitively when she, <laughs> when she and no one, they never really found, they, they never really got resolution on that either, on the Black Dahlia murder, right? You're familiar well, with Well, here's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar with serial killers too. Um, and, you know, I got to say, I got to throw this in there because um, there's a man who was taken out, absolutely murdered, um, Dave McGowan, you know. Oh, yeah. Totally, I'm, I'm with you, 100%. <laughs> His book, Program to Kill, is an absolute must. And I know the, like, the picture they picked for the cover, it's like, did you have to put that on the cover? Because people aren't going to pick this book up. But then again, it's, it's, it kind of weeds out those that have, you know, no, not really good intentions of, of figuring out what's truly going on, because I'll tell you, it is the premier yeah, I agree. It's, it's on amazing. Yeah. what, what ritual killings are all about, um, through mind control, totally through mind control. And the whole narrative, another false narrative on the serial killer, which is he blows it out of the water. He just blows it out of the water. And again, this helps, is, is unpleasant as some, of, as some of these things can be. And he doesn't go into a lot of gory details. He has to throw, and he says, I'm going to just throw out what in places what I have to say to get you know, uh, the point across. It's not a book about the gore and all that. It's, it's not for voyeurs. It's really, um, it gets back to what, what we're talking about, which is mind control is the name of the game. This has always been the name of the game. Always, 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 always. This goes back centuries, thousands of years. Um, this, is, this is nothing new. Uh, the version of what is happening is, you know, the technique, the, the circumstances, the, 
but it's the, really the same method. It just gets upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, and according to technologies, you know, that we have now that we didn't have a hundred years ago, changes what it is, but the methodology is really the same. The process is really the same. And so I do like to send people to this book because it, it really changes conceptually your worldview of, of, you know, what you thought you understood about the so-called serial killer. Um, they were mind controlled, period, end of story. And he presents so many cases of, of that happening. Yeah. Um, and then, like you just said, so, I mean, he talks about, I think he even mentions Black Dahlia too in there. You know, this is, this was ritual. This wasn't, um, this wasn't, you know, this wasn't really anything else. It wasn't some sexual madman. It was a ritualistic programmed individual who um, went out and did the bidding for his programmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and, and I, the truth is, I don't know what the, the cattle and sheep mutilations true. I can't say I have inside knowledge on that, but I absolutely have drawn a conclusion years ago that this is related to um, what's, this is just science for them. This is science, plus it throws a whole new fear level into people um by you know oh my god i mean people and i mean the guy even the farmer guy who told me about it man or said it he said that you know uh the sheep had been mutilated and my first response was because his sheep are always they're always jumping the fence and coming over into our field and i have to herd them out and and he was trying to tell me how they were you know just really riled up really riled up because of what had happened a few nights back and so he tells me they were mutilated and at first i said oh what you know was it a bear mountain lion and then his eyes got really wide and he leaned in you know like this yeah. and he said, no i'm talking alien shit and it was like there it is there it is right there that's part yeah. of the purpose right there is to just hit the primal fear see you got to get to that primal fear which is what they do in mk ultra yeah. with torture and uh rape and uh drowning and they're taking you to that primal level eventually not in the beginning they're going to break you down slowly but eventually they're going to have to hit the primal level because that's when the person lets go gives up it's a primal instinct it's not a it's you know i've said this to people i have an actual memory of splitting um, that came back to me years ago during the process. And I am completely now removed from the me that's screaming over here. Yeah. Um, and it is a, I mean, it's, it's all in my head. It's just all like, who's screaming? I don't even know who's screaming. Um, and the reason I bring that up is that when you go through this process of torture, they take you to the primal level because it's an automatic response. It's not a, you don't sit there and go, gee, should I split? Should I not split? You know, that's not happening. You're being forced into something that's a survival technique. And so I believe this process we're in globally yeah. will take us eventually, if it succeeds, will take us to, you know, the, the masses that are living in fear will take them to the level of primal fear where i mean look at now who's you know i'm behind a mask i've got my sunglasses on and i can get on the phone and anonymously call the police on that person and no one will ever know that i did it yeah. uh, that's something in that person that's doing that it's a reaction to what's going on but that is a to me a very psychological taking that person down the road yeah. To what will you do when we push your buttons the right way? Where will you go? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I highly recommend people read it. Obviously, his weird scenes inside the canyon got a lot more attention than exactly. the book too. And very important for lots well, of other things I've talked it's, about. It's a debate which one of them to me yeah. is the reason they took him out. Which one? Who well, knows? I think the main reason they had to take him out is because he had been able to completely analyze in a way that the normal person could understand what's happening now. So it was really more a preventative thing than it was retribution for something in the past. 
they were just like, he's an everyman. He was a construction dude. He wasn't like with the super high, like, um, like uh, educated kind of intellect. He had natural human intellect, but he also right. was of the left, right? He was of the yeah. left. Far more, the left wing conspiracy theorists are much more dangerous to the system than the right wing conspiracy theorists. Um, and so he had to go. Yeah, he had yeah. It was just that. Yeah. He had to go. But he also wrote a book about fascism, too, that a lot of people aren't aware of called The Real Meaning of the F Word. Um, I have that one, too. Yeah. yeah. So people should check out all of his work. It's, it's excellent. All right. So the next thing I wanted to kind of go through, because this all kind of winds back to your what we first talked about, was this uh, idea of. Um, of content of cult right and then of contact tracers so for me like it, it, both in my research and it matches up with my experience it may be a different set of people for you because you grew up in a different car, part of the country and it was a different kind of program but like so here the scientologists and the process church of the final judgment did a lot of the um harassment and surveillance and targeting of individuals who were either MKUltra subjects or just regular kind of targeted individuals, which they are different things, but there's crossover sometimes between them, right? And those are things that most people largely look at as cult. Most people can understand and accept that Scientology is, though a big one, a cult, right, that has certain kinds of both technological and metaphysical tools that they use in order to control the people who are part of the cult, but they also deploy those tools unknowingly on other people, right? And then the process church, a similar kind of thing, sort of related to Scientology, but a little bit different, but both of those cults, clans, groups of people um, are known to have operated MKUltra safe houses around uh, Los Angeles right, and have been um, identified by many different, many different angles of research as people involved in harassment programs, right? You're, so you're aware of this stuff, right? Maybe different groups in different places. What people don't seem to understand is these people who are being pulled into being contact tracers are being exposed to the same indoctrination programs that people in both of these cults do and being asked to perform the same kind of targeted harassment on people that these cults did in order to gain funding and approval and uh, tax exempt uh, status from the government. <laughs> right. Am I right about that? Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I think there's the, the willing participant and then the unconscious brainwashed contact tracer, mm -hmm. which is the person that, you know, nobody's approaching them specifically. Nobody's, and I think these are going to number far greater. And the reason I say that is I go back to Nazi Germany and, you know, people are always saying, how could that happen? How did it get, well, it's a process. It's a drawn out long-term process to take people there. You know, it's incremental. And so I believe the, the contact tracer, I don't have that much information on the official contact tracer program, but the unconscious contact tracer, I mean, these people, I wouldn't even consider themselves a contact tracer. I don't think, you know, they wouldn't even know the term but they will report on anyone um, out of their own brainwashing, you mm -hmm. know? And this is exactly, I mean, I, I'm so close to, you know, the next one just going Heil Hitler to them, you know? It's, I mean, I wanna do that really bad, I'm not going to, but this is how it happens. This is how you move into that. And, you know, you can go to all the old sayings of, uh, you know, we would never let that happen again. We're in it. It's happening. Yeah, there, I mean, we can question about exactly how the uh, Holocaust was reported and what exactly happened there. But then it was the Jews, and now it's either the Trump supporters or the non-mask wearers or the science deniers. It's the same same thing, just a different religion or just a different cult, right? So yes. yeah, it's divide and conquer, um, and uh, it's a new prejudice. Yeah, if you're wearing a mask. They're prejudice. Yeah. There's, it doesn't matter if you have a valid reason. There, you don't even get that far. Um, or that you believe it's your civil. None of that matters. If you don't have a mask on, you're bad. Yep. You're bad and you're not following the rules. I mean, I had one lady yell at me, it's the law. I mean, she just okay. she screamed at me, you know. And um, it's, it's the new prejudice. And then, of course, don't even get me started on the, the riots and so forth. But... 
yeah. um, you know, they're throwing in, they're throwing in a variety of, of forms to confuse, divide, um, and just amp up that level of fear. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing I kind of wanted to get to in the first hour here, and then we're going to go to more of some of the internal aspects of all of this on the other side is, you know, like you talked about, you don't wear a mask, right? And, and you talked about uh, your health concern, you know, your issue with your collapsed lung and this whole thing with the note. And one of the things that like, I've really been like paying attention to and looking at is that like, People need to, or at least people who care about this stuff, because obviously the majority don't, and they're just doing what they're told. But like for each person, like their boundary, right? Or their line in the sand, I, I, that feels like a little bit of an extreme term to me. I like, I prefer boundary or your, right? right? Like is, is a different place, right? And, and I think like the importance of picking one that you can comfortably stand firm in yourself in and that like it doesn't so like for me like obviously i live here in los angeles where it got extreme more rapidly so the option there was no option of not wearing a mask to go into a grocery store right um, right. Uh, right and so like so i i thought hard about it right like i really sat with it and it was like, okay, there was not even any like little Mexican grocery stores where they were not, they seem even more scared about it than, you know, right? So right. we're like, oh, go find us. That, that, that wasn't happening here. So it was right. like, okay, so am I going to wear the mask and go in the store? Or am I going to stay home and order my groceries? In which case I'd be paying 30% more to the same companies that are not respecting my, my personal freedom or my intellect or anything. So that was a no, I'm not gonna do that. So like, okay. So I kind of, you know, I decided pretty quickly on that I'm not gonna participate in the mask economy. So I'm gonna only wear something that I already have, right? So I have this headband that I bought when I lived in New York for like, that covers your ears for when it's snowing outside if you wanna yeah, exercise. Yeah. And I kind of pull it across my, it doesn't, it's not a mask, right? It's ridiculous. Right, right. And I kind of wear it at an angle, right? Just to but kind of, you know, <laughs> and sometimes I leave one side of my nose hanging out, right? But I just decided that I was not going to argue with people about the mask, right? Like I'm gonna, sometimes I even put it over to go in and then I take it off when I'm inside or I'll pull it down unless somebody looks at me, right? Cause then I'm in there and I'm breathing, I'm getting my shit and I'm leaving, right? Um, and I just decided that for me, now I know there's people who for them, this is a really important issue to have these conversations and these arguments, but it became pretty clear to me that like, there's all the energy being focused on the masks and on, um, you know, the racism stuff, like, right? And that, so everybody is like, it's kind of like huddled over on the end of the football field where the, the main part activity is going on. Meanwhile, there's a completely open field. <laughs> right. Now, like, reality is very changeable. Like, there's a tremendous amount of, like, synchronicity is kind of going on like a, a manifestation thing where like speak about something in the morning and it's happening in the afternoon or it shows up maybe in a way you didn't expect and and i'm feeling more drawn towards using the the flexibility of reality right now to expand my metaphysical you know sort of relationship with myself in the world and spiritual growth and and uh just the way i do the things that i do so I was like, for me, if I spend like two things, if I spend an, an 30 minutes or an hour trying to educate someone in the store or the store owner about the difference between a law and a mandate, they're likely not going to change their mind. And that's an hour I'm not going to get back while reality, like at some point, maybe hopefully people will realize, oh, there's a whole other field over there that no one's playing on. And then others will come and I'll have lost the opportunity to run across the field with no kind of, that's the decision for me. And, and what other people decide is fine. The other thing is, I also recognize about myself that I'm a person with a tremendous amount of energy, right? Like just, I have a level that other people mostly just don't have. So when I get upset or agitated or in confrontation with somebody, then that's spraying everywhere. And the system <laughs> loves that energy, that ink, that, yeah. that, right? Like that, yeah. the whole program. And so for me, that's time and energy that I'm not going to get back and isn't like, right? Like, and, and so I've made, made that decision, but there are certain things that I will not do, right? Like will not do, like absolutely will not do. 
Um, and those are not flexible for me. I've made that decision. And if it means I can't have things because of that, fine. Like that, it's just, you know, like that's the whole, you know, I'm, I'm not going to wear a mask that somebody else gives me, someone that they say you have to wear this kind or it has to go like this or whatever, right? Like I'm not doing any of that. I'm not agreeing to anything. I'm not taking a vaccine. I'm not taking a test. I'm not doing any of that stuff. And it's not even a thing to argue about. I'm just not. And whatever that means, that's what it means, right? Like, right. but um, I think that like, I'm, I'm interested for you because you, you know, like, you know, whether it's like, how you kind of, I, mean, I know you have the health concern, but I also feel like for you. It's more, it's more than that, yeah. For you, for you like the, 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 like, we have a different, we're on a different lifetime. You, you and I, we have different personalities. We've been uh, exposed to a lot of the same bullshit, but some different stuff. And for you, like that standing firm in that place, the, the place where you need to stand firm is a little bit different area on the field than when I need to and sort of how you kind of came to what your thing was going to be and, and what is the deeper meaning of it for you? Because I think people really need to sit yeah. with questions themselves. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to put it this way. My, <clears throat> my spiritual practice is about facing whatever comes at me. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm not static, you know, I'm not doing or living or thinking the same way I was even five years ago, let alone 10 or 20 years ago, right? So I, I don't see things as static, like I can make a decision now in this time with what's going on and also know that I don't know what's coming, you know, next month or next year or the next six months and my decisions and how I interact in the world may change. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I'm not stuck in, and that for me, as a matter of fact, if I get the opportunity, there's this thing at the end of the show, I'd like to read um, something that is, it's actually officially part of a Steiner prayer, but it's so poignant to what's happening. Um, and it came through, uh, it's called the Sophia Institute newsletter. Um, I'd like to read that because it's really my philosophy on everything that comes at me. This is, I just have to face, stay grounded and strong and deal with the next piece. Um, well, for example, the, the doctor's letter, I've already changed what I'm doing there because I decided with all the confrontation for almost three months, and I mean, it was just it just progressed that my constitution doesn't need to continue to be battered constantly. So if I show the letter at the beginning, it may or may not alleviate that in certain circumstances. So, I mean, that's already really against my civil rights. I don't have to reveal this condition to anyone. So I've made that compromise. Um, I'm sure, you know, uh, I have very, very strong ideas and they're based in my previous experiences. They're based in, one is based in a dream I had January 1st, um, that I know some of the things that are coming very soon. Um, and so uh, as a friend of mine in Moab said, <laughs> these are the good old days, <laughs> you know, this is, this is the good old days right now. And I'm not being negative or manifesting negative things. I'm paying attention to signs. I'm drawing on my history. I'm watching the pattern being revealed, the agenda being revealed. And none of this means that ultimately they're going to be fully successful for the next 200 years. It simply means that the reaction, the, the problem, and then the reaction that they're, they're um, creating in people and how people are choosing, many majority is choosing to react. Um, it, all of this leads to ideas about um, what's coming. And so for me, this goes right into my spiritual practice and my personal evolution. Um, and I have already done a switch over to, and this is, I do believe, an absolute result. It's not a virtue necessarily of mine. It's a result of my practice, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is that 
I'm seeing opportunity for my personal growth. Um, actually recognizing it on an internal level as this is an opportunity. Yep. It may not be comfortable, it may not be fun, but boy, is it an opportunity. And I found myself saying a couple weeks ago, <laughs> a very, um, bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. I'm ready. I know I'm in for some shit. Bring it on and I will step up to the best of my ability in every situation and every day. And I've had some <laughs> since I said that. And in, in, in my practice, the more I take responsibility for, um, I'll, well, I'll call it what it is, my own initiation, um, on the light side initiation. I was involuntarily <laughs> initiated my entire life on the dark side, which has given me uh, incredible insight and perception uh, of things that other people don't see or hear. But also there's another thing, and I wanted to um, bring this up because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that are empathic, extremely sensitive. Um, and I just want to throw this out before I say what I was going to say that, you know, go easy on yourself um, because there are those of us that are picking up what others aren't picking up. And I have absolute uh, proof of that in my life. Um, I literally can lay down at night and, you know, still wide awake with, in the dark with my eyes closed. And I get um, in my mind's eye, I literally see some frequencies generated in the form of light. Um, and they vary. Their shapes are different and so forth. It's not all the time, but I know that there's things coming through. I see, can, can still see uh, beings or, you know, things that are briefly in a flash that are not of this world. Um, so I know it's real. And for people that are more sensitive, whether it's just feeling something or seeing something, this is a very challenging time because we are being bombarded by frequencies intentionally, uh, either individually or by regions or neighborhoods or by states or countries, whatever you know they decide to do. This is real. There are people recording these frequencies um, and saying, you know, this is a new one they hadn't seen on their, their meter before and so forth. I mean, it's, it's pretty high tech equipment that I don't have any access to. Uh, but I want to throw that out there. And if you're already empathic or just a very sensitive person, um, this can be a challenging time. I've just shared with you, you know, before we started recording, my body internally has a constant vibration now. Um, and it has been on for probably months. Uh, so I know that it doesn't impede what I need to do if I keep my mind and my heart sound and I keep my practice up, but I'm constantly aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of like with the doctor's note, it's like I really took time and thought and spent a couple days thinking about what's the next step for me. It, do I need to, and this is what I mean about not being static. Things are coming at us. They're going to continue to come at us with probably renewed force in the next, you know, at least several months, if not longer. And it's, it's good to be able to know your limits, to know, and like you were saying, do I want to spend energy arguing with someone in a store or would I rather put that energy somewhere else? And for me, it's like, do I want to take everybody's <laughs> contact tracer confrontation yeah. or you know, do I want to keep myself a little stronger because I'm more concerned about the human trafficking aspect. I'm more concerned about the nanotechnology and the frequencies and the mind control that's going on. You know, I want to talk about that too, but I'm like everybody else have to deal with masks, you know, and I have to say there are aspects from my history that when I just go out in public, I already know before I get in the car to go, something you're going to feel something here yeah. so get yourself in this right space because of your history you're going to feel something here yeah. um so uh there was something oh there was something about empathic and I, it's gone i i went off on that sidetrack to say to people you know be gentle with yourself and it kind of slipped away maybe it'll come back okay it'll come back when it's meant to and we will record yeah. on the other side we're gonna 
I, I do want to, uh, we're going to get into some of the internal stuff. And I, oh, always, I thought we were there. Sorry. <laughs> talking about like what, what we were there, but we're some of the um, interesting other ways that spend their time during this time. But I also, we never quite got into exactly what we think this is. And so we're going to start with that on the other side uh, and no. then we're into the sort of the inner world. Um, but before we uh, move to the patron section, um, let people know where, how they can support you and where they can find you. Oh, okay. Well, I do. Um, I, I have to be honest, I have been a bit remiss on my blog site. There's a ton of information on there. Um, I will warn people, I occasionally go back in and, and, and tap on um, the videos and so forth. And many, many, many of them are gone. They've been censored now. They're completely gone. But there's still a ton of information, even though I haven't been keeping it up very regularly. And that's at ourlifebeyondmkultra.wordpress.com. And I do have two books, as probably most of your viewers already know. Um, uh, same title, Our Life Beyond MKUltra. There's a book one and then a book two. Um, and you can, you can find links on the site to that. Cool. Awesome. All right. You can uh, join us for the second half at patreon.com forward slash off media. We'll see you on the other side. All right.